What up, nerds? It's Jason here from Custom Cans, and this week we have something a little bit different. We've got a KVN switch from T-Smart, which I'm going to be having a quick play with, and uh, then we'll open it up and have a look and see what's inside one of these things, because I, I don't know. It's, uh, it, I was, it's, you know, sometimes the universe provides, you know, the, many years ago my house had a bit of damp, and as I was walking home, I found a, a dehumidifier just lying on the side of the road, took it home, all that was wrong with it was the fuse needed changing, and I'm like, yes. It's exactly what I needed, and uh, the universe provided. And uh, th this is the same thing. I've I've got a load of stuff to design this month, and I use SolidWorks. And I don't. Uh, if you've ever used SolidWorks, if you try and do anything else at the same time, it crashes hard. So if you open Photoshop or something like that, as it's in the middle of a calculation, it, it'll crash. And I've got to do loads of flow simulations, that kind of stuff, which can take hours. So it means that my PC is tied up. So what I'll normally do is I'll get that going. Then I'll run upstairs, use one of the other computers for doing video editing and photo editing and other design stuff. Uh, but I really, really wanted a KVM. <laughs> Because then what I can do is I can have two PCs down here. I can have one running all the stuff for SolidWorks. I can have, and then I can switch over to the other. So I don't know if you know what a KVM is. It's basically a little switch that lets you switch your keyboard, your video and mouse KVM. Uh, yes, yeah, so, and because I use a dual display, it made it a bit more awkward because it's normally a single display. But uh, T-Smart make a dual display one, which is very cool. And they said, do you want to try one for a video? So I'm like, that's exactly what I want. I will 100% try that for a video because then I get a free one. And uh, yeah, it's exactly what I need. So this is cool. I've built a new PC. You'll have to, I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. It's, uh, it's very cool, cool and retro. But first, let's get this out, see what this, this is all about and uh, what, what you get with it. So without further ado. So this is the actual KVM. So uh, it's pretty solid. As you can see, many connections on the back because it's a dual display one. So you'll have two monitors in from each PC. You've got USB for keyboard and mouse, and you've also got another USB there for something like a flash drive or a hard drive or another thing that you use all the time, uh, which is pretty handy. So if you're transferring files from one PC to the other, you can pop your flash drive in there, save it to that, transfer it over. That can also be really useful because we've got a PC here that's air-gapped, so we've got a piece of software. Yeah, we've got like a Chinese printer, and the software that came with it essentially had an embedded virus in it. We couldn't get rid of the virus without killing the software, so we just decided to have a separate PC that wasn't connected to the internet, and we just run this one bit of equipment with that one PC, don't connect to the internet, just in case. Like, the company assures us it's not actually a virus, but all virus checkers seem to flag this as a virus. So that's never on the internet, so when we've got to transfer files and stuff, you know, a lot of running around with flash drives. Again, with this, uh, if we used a, a, a KVM on that, we could switch over to one with internet, download the stuff onto a USB drive, switch over to the other one, transfer the files over, and then format the drive so that it can't transfer viruses back, that kind of thing. But, you know, you get, a, get an idea. It's useful for, for, for a few different things. All right, so what else we got? So we've got user manual. And what is beneath this shelf? Oh, I've got two boxes, meow. Oh, cool cables. Okay, so we've got HDMI to HDMI. Another HDMI. Oh, a HDMI and USB combined. That's pretty cool. Um, oh yeah, so that must be going out from this into the PC. So you've got a USB B going to USB A, plug it into the PC. And then another one of those. So that's good, because I was worried that I wouldn't have enough cables to plug all this stuff in. Um, so yep, it comes with cables, turns out. And what else have we got in here? I got a remote control. Ooh. I, I, I have no idea why you'd need that. Uh, <laughs> if you sat at your computer with your keyboard, video, and mouse, like remote control, really? You can't just open it. It has a remote control. Uh, I don't know what the remote control does, but that's uh, that. I was not expecting that. <laughs> it seems a bit unnecessary. But I'm sure there's a use case. I suppose if you had like. Consoles, Playstations, Xboxes, that kind of stuff, plugged into it again so you could switch screens. Um, pew, pew, pew. They might be on a shelf somewhere, so the, the remote control might be useful for that. But for, for desktop use, I can't see me. I, I, that's going to get lost. What else do I get? Yeah, power supply. All right, cool. All right, that's that. Let's have a look at this, this wee beastie. I quite like these rubber bands. Though. They've got black rubber bands on the cables. It's pretty cool. I suppose for cable management, you can manage your cables. All right, let's get this. Mother flipper open and have a quick initial look at this. As I said, I am interested to kind of open this up and see what's inside as well. And it, um, oh, oh yeah, it got screws on the side. All right, so on the back here we've got HDMI's, USBs, that kind of thing. Uh, we've also got 
a headphone cable. I think it picks up the audio from the DV uh, from the HDMI's and uh, takes out the audio and then you've got a separate headphone jack or speaker thing there so that you can switch the sound between the PCs as well and uh, just plug your speakers into there instead of plugging them into the, into one of the PCs. 12 volt input so that's that's good so it's got it it's got it well I didn't even think about the sound yeah because if you've got your speakers plugged into one PC when you switch over you won't have sound. Clever they've, they've, thought, of, they've thought of all this stuff and Sorry, as you can tell, I'm excited. I've wanted one of these for years. I used to be a, a PC technician, uh, sort of repairing PCs, that kind of stuff. And this kind of thing would have been super handy because you can like work on multiple PCs at once. So, I, but I just never wanted to shell out the money for one. So I've uh, done. Uh, we've got a selector, selector switch on the front here, power switch, IR receiver, various lights. I don't know. So before I plug this in, because that'll take a little while, I'll stop the video, I'll plug everything in, and then we'll do some testing. Let's just have a look at the cool PC and what, what we built. Um, so this is going to be my PC for doing big maths. Um, so if we're doing the flow simulations, stuff like that, you need, you need some grunt. Uh, but also, I'm on a budget. So this is all built out of stuff that we bought from eBay. So we've got this super cool case. Look at this. This is like a classic Lian Li from like the from the 2000s. It's all made of super thick aluminium. It's just a beautiful thing. And I picked this up for 30 quid used, which is pretty good. Uh, we took out the five and a quarter inch bays at the front so we could fit in a dual 120 mil rad at the front there uh, for a bit more cooling. Because inside here we got oh that's a bit beastly. On wheels as well, so cool. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, we need graphics card, but that's not kind of what we uh, what we need it for. So we got 32 gig of quite quick RAM under here. We've got a Radeon 3950X, so we've got 16 cores, 32 threads, lots of number crunching, uh, a decent motherboard, a very fast SSD capable of uh, 6,000 meg a second, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so basically this is a number crunching behemoth which we built on the cheap. So the motherboard and processor picked up for 450. Uh, RAM, I think we paid about 100-ish, between 100 and 150. Graphics card at the time, this was during the graphics card shortage, but it's a really weird graphics card that no one was looking for, a W5100 AMD Fire Pro, and I think we managed to get that for 50 quid, which was a bargain. Uh, the all-in-one cooler was used as well. I I think that was about 50 quid as well. So you got 50, 100, this was 450, that's 550, 700. And then we did put a decent Seasonic power supply in it, which I did buy new, because power supplies, get a good one, it lasts, lasts forever, and uh, you need good stable power for this kind of thing. I didn't want it crashing on me. So I think that was like 75 quid, decent fans, so that uh, if it gets warm, you can get, this is like an, in, this is a, industrial fan capable of crazy rpms and we've got all the fan profiles and stuff set up so if ever this gets really hot this thing kicks in and it can like properly almost power the pc along with the amount of air that's coming out the back of it so it'll never overheat and crash so it's basically just number crunching reliability and cheap is what they're going for so it's less than a thousand pounds we managed to build a you know something that's capable of doing 32 processes at once uh, with a load of RAM and some really fast hard drives. So that was, I was really, really pleased with that. This was built during the chip shortage as well. So, um, yeah, bargain. But anyway, enough nerd stuff. Let's, uh, let's get on with, uh, with building this thing. Uh, yeah, I spotted a problem here. The uh, KVM switch is all HDMI. When they asked, they said, do you want HDMI on DisplayPort? And I'm like, oh, the monitor's got both. It'll be fine. But uh, I just realized on the back of this new rendering machine, we've only got DisplayPort. Um, but luckily, being a bit of a hoarder and a computer nerd, I managed to rustle up this fat, uh, fat graphics card. So we've got a ATI Vega 64 there. So that's got a couple of HDMI ports, and also it's hugely fat. HBM memory will probably be good for a graphics workstation anyway. Uh, this thing was a little bit, a uh, little bit weak anyway. So we will stick this graphics card in and then fire it up and see what happens. Just look how thick the aluminium is on that. Literally, don't make them like they used to. Okay, so we've got it all wired in, I think. So we've got um, two HDMI's coming from one, two HDMI's coming from the other computer. 
we've got one USB which should be carrying the keyboard and mouse and I want you to appreciate just the just the raw number of wires that you've got plugged into the back of this thing look at this <laughs> yeah. so each PC you've got two HDMI and a USB going out to the PC and then on the input side we've got USB from the keyboard the mouse we've got the two outputs so I haven't plugged anything into here which is the, the flash drive but uh, yeah, look, that is a that's a lot of wires a lot of wires cool so we have it all wired up there's a there's a few little issues it turns out I had a dodgy HDMI cable which threw me out for a while I couldn't get one of the screens working I swapped some cables over did a bit of testing I got it there so here we have the unthinkable. I have uh, SolidWorks running on this. So yeah, so on this one, SolidWorks, I can dick around with models. And then if I was doing a flow simulation or something that was tying up this one, I press a button. And I'm on to look, I can use Photoshop and, and stuff uh, at the same time. So it doesn't, so it's not gonna make SolidWorks crash, which is nice. And I was just reading through the instructions and uh, there's hotkeys as well, which is great. So it means that you could take the take this, stash it away under the desk, which is going to be a bit neater because I'm not totally happy about having all those cables dangling everywhere. Uh, so yeah, so you could take that away, and then we go scroll up, scroll up to, and it switches. Oh, uh, uh, scroll up, scroll up one, scroll up, scroll up two. Oh, no, it's print screen. It's wrong, it's wrong too. Yeah, so it does do it. It switches backwards and forwards, but uh, if you've got this split over, because uh, SolidWorks doesn't work well with dual displays, you have to um, basically span the display. So it basically has the whole window going across two displays, and I think that might be confusing the poor thing. Um, but it works, the keyboard and the mouse works. Um, I think I can do some other stuff as well. Let's have a look, hold on. Yeah, so, I don't know, it's a bit gimmicky, but I can see, so if I was running a flow simulation on that, it's doing all its calculations, that kind of stuff. But I wanted to then do some Photoshop stuff while keeping an eye on it, I suppose, then I could go, scroll up, scroll up, three. And I've got, come on, sort yourself out. So then I could be working on Photoshop on this computer while just keeping an eye on SolidWorks on that one just to make sure everything's going okay without interfering with them. So yeah, it's a pretty cool bit of kit. Okay, let's see how we get into this. Well, first of all, I've got to uh, unplug about four and a half thousand wires. Boom, safe. All right. All right, let's see, how do we attack this? Uh, so it looks like Phillips screws on the sides. As you can see, I'm wearing something else now. It's because I had to find a graphics card. Uh, it took me took me a couple of days to find ooh, a graphics card with the appropriate number of HDMI's on it. In the because yeah, I didn't have one in the office. All right, so let's undo one screw. Undo two screws. That's, uh, oh, I feel it's starting to give. And I see on the back here a do not tamper thing, which I'm going to tamper with. Take that. Ah, tamper with you. Ta da! Okay, let's have a look. So this is, I think it's some kind of. Oh, must have been. Oh, oh yeah, it's that case. It's the casing. It's the casing steel, top bit anodized aluminium. So as you can see inside, uh, you know, it's just, just what you'd expect really. <laughs> so you've got the main board here, powered by an IT6634TE. And uh, you've got a little sticker here, XU Fung. So I suspect that's who developed this, this board. You've got a little daughter board here with the switches to switch between them. As I said, I would like to change this from yellow. You know, if you've got a red casing, having a yellow switch. I don't know, it doesn't, I would have gone for red. I know red is a scary color, but maybe just a black switch, but it's difficult, it's difficult, I don't know. Yellow does stand out against the black of the casing, but it just looked a little bit off against the red. Uh, so simple power switch here, glued in the front, to switch on and off the DC on the front there. Here's all your ports at the back. Uh, you've got, you can see here these two little crystals. So you've got individual clock generators, here, um, it's probably keeping the USB in sync. 
but yeah, uh, uh, you've got a little beeper beeper there. Apparently, you, I think you can set it on there so it goes beep when it changes between the mo monitors, or maybe when you when you use the remote. And I think that's about it. Yeah, so it was just interesting to have a look in. You know, while you've got it, might as well have a look and see if there's anything exciting in here. There's not. There's not usually. <laughs> But, you know, you've got plenty of space to stash stash stuff in there. You know, if you've got to hide a flash drive with your secret information, oh, I could go in there. But, uh, yeah, it was nice to play with something a bit different today. And to be honest, I really wanted a KVM switch, so uh, couldn't couldn't say no. But uh, if you, if you want to see inside some other non-headphone stuff, let me know. You never know. We might, uh, might have a look inside. So this... Other than potentially somewhere to stash your your secrets, there's not <laughs> there's not a lot in these that you can that you can really do. Um, but yeah, it, was, it looked like a quite nicely laid out board, which is good. And there was no like um, I don't know. Sometimes you'll see bodge cables and stuff in in inside this, but no, it's um, you know nicely laid out. Looks like a pretty well to get put together bit of kit. The, from from a product design point of view, what I would like to have seen is for this to be flat on the top because then there's the potential of sticking this under a monitor or under something else or basically just stacking stuff on top of it because you know how you know like i've got headphone amps and stuff here and they're all flat on top and i can stack them up whereas because uh, this has got a bit of an angle to the top of it you couldn't stack something on top of that which is a little bit little bit annoying but it does the job you know it works pretty well one thing I'm surprised at is the, the speed of switching. I thought it would be a bit quicker. I've never used one of these, but I think I don't necessarily think it's the KVM's fault. I think it's the monitors picking up because I might have slightly different refresh rates set on the two PCs or something like that. It seemed that the monitors took a little, took a minute to kind of get their, get their stuff together before they were ready. But uh, yeah, it does the job. It does the job. And I like the hotkeys. The hotkeys is a really good idea because then I can have this stashed away under the desk just use hotkeys to switch between the two PCs. This is cool. Um, so thank you very much to T-Smart for letting me have a play with one of these. And uh, yeah, it's worth checking out, especially if you've got a dual monitor, because I've not seen many of those. So yes, yeah, if you've got dual display like I'm running here, you'll run two PCs. It's, it's nice to know that someone's got a sensibly priced unit. I think these are about, just over, these are sort of between 200 and 250. So it's not crazy money, you know, if, if, you're, if you're spending a, couple of grand on PCs and, uh, and and monitors extra couple of hundred quid to have that convenience of being able to switch between them is nice uh, if you've got any questions on the general operation of the thing stick them in the questions below and uh, yeah it's been super fun hanging out and I will see you again with some more headphone stuff in the, in the next few days all right cool loving your work bye